The Tale of Todd Laprec. My father, Tam Dale, peace to his bains, was a wild splorin' lad in his young days, with little wisdom and little grace. He was fond of a lass and fond of a glass, and fond of a ran dan, but I could never hear tell that he was muckle yes for honest employment. For a thing to another, he listed at last for a soldier, and was in the garrison of this fort, which was the first way that any of the deals came to set foot upon the bass, sorrow upon that service. The governor brewed his ain ale, it seems it was the worst conceivable, the rock was provisioned frae the shores with weavers, the thing was ill-guided and there were whiles when they boot to fish and shoot solons for their diet. To croon awe, there was the days of the persecution. The perishing called chomers were all occupied with saints and martyrs, the sought to the earth of which it was nae worthy. And though Tam Dale carried a firelock there, a single soldier, and liked a lass and a glass, as I was saying, the mind of the man was mere just than set with his position. He had glints of the glory of the kirk. There were whiles when his donor raised to see the Lord's saunts misguide it, and shame covered him that he should be hoarding a connel or carrying a firelock in so black a business. There were next to it when he was here on sentry, the place ah oh, wished, the frosts of winter may be riving in the wars, and they would hear yin of the prisoners strike up a psalm, and the rest join in, and the blessed soons rising from the different chomas, or dungeons, I would rather say, so that this old craig in the sea was like a pair to heaven. Black shame was on his soul. His sins hove up before him, muckle as the bass, and above all that chief sin, that he should hear hond and haggin and hashin at Christ's kirk. But the truth is that he resisted the spirit. Day cam, there were the rousing companions, and his good resolves departed. In their days dwelt upon the bass a man a god, Peden the prophet was his name. You lay heard tell the prophet Peden. There was never the wail of him since sign, and it's a question with money if there ever was his like afore. He was wild as a peat hag, fearsome to look at, fearsome to hear, his face like the day of judgment. The voice of him was like a solens, and dinnled in folk's lugs, and the words of him like coals of fire. Now there was a lass on the rock, and I think she had little to do, for it was nae place for decent women. But it seems she was bonny, and her and Tam Dale were very well agreed. It befell that Peden was in his garden, his lane at the praying, when Tam and the lass came by. And what should the lass do but mock with laughter at the son's devotions? He rose and looked at the two of them, and Tam's knees noitered together at the look of him. But when he spoke, it was mere in sorrow than in anger. Peer thing, peer thing, says he, and it was the lass he looked at. I hear ye skirl and lock, he says, but the Lord has a deed shot prepared for ye, and at that surprising judgment ye shall skirl but the e time. Shortly thereafter, she was donnering on the craigs with two or three soldiers, and it was a bloy day. There came a ghost of wind, clochtered by the coats, and a war we had bag and baggage. And it was remarked by the soldiers that she gied but the a skirl. Nae doubt this judgment had some wecht upon Tam Dale, but it passed again and him none the better. A day he was fighting with another soldier lad. Deal hae me, quo Tam, for he was a profane swearer, and there was Peden glowering at him, gash and waifu. Peden with his long chafts and lunting in, the mod harped about his kist, 
and the hand of him held it with the black nails upon the finger nibs, for he had no care of the body. Fie, fie, peer man, cries he, the peer fool man. Deal, hae me, co he, and I see the deal at his oxter. The conviction of guilt and grace came in on Tam like the deep sea. He flung down the pike that was in his horns. I will nae mere lift arms against the cause of Christ, says he, and was as good as his word. There was a sair fight in the beginning, but the governor, seeing him resolved, gied him his discharge, and he went and dwelt and made it to North Berwick, and had I a good name with honest folk frae that day on. It was in the year 1706 that the bass came in the hands of the Durimples, and there was twa men socht the chairjot. Baith were weel qualified, for they had baith been soldiers in the garrison, and kent the gate to Honol Solons, and the seasons and values o' them. For by that they were baith, or they baith seemed, earnest professors, and men o' comely conversation. The first of them was just Tam Dale, my father. The second was Yin La Preik, whom the folk called Todd La Preik mostly, but whether for his name or his nature I could never hear tell. Weel, Tam gaed to see La Preik upon his business and took me, that was a toddling laddie, by the hand. Todd had his dwelling in the lang loan be north the kirk yet. It's a dark, uncanny loan, forby that the kirk as I had an ill name since the days of James the Saxt and the devil's cantrips played therein when the queen was on the seas. And as for Todd's hoose, it was in the murkest end and was little liked by some that kent the best. The door was on the sneck that day and me and my father gaed strocht in. Todd was a wabster to his trade. His loom stood in the butt. There he sat a muckle, fat, white, harsh a man like Krish, wi a kind of holy smile that gart me scunner. The hand of him I cawed the shuttle, but his een was steeked. We cried to him by his name, we skirled in the deed lug of him, we shook him by the shooter. Nay, meaner a service, there he sat on his doup and cawed the shuttle and smiled like Krish. God be good to us, says Tam Dale. This is no canny. He had jump said the word when Todd La Preek came to himself. Is this you, Tam? says he. Haith man, I'm blithe to see ye. A while's fond ye a bit dwam like this, he says. It's frae the stomach. Weel, they began to crack about the bass and which of them twa was to get the word note, and little by little came to very ill words and twined in anger. A mind wheel that as my father and me gave him again, he came hour and hour the same expression. How little he like it, Todd La and his dwams. Dwam, says he. I think folk a brunt for dwams like yon. Ah, wheel, my father got the bass, and Todd had to go wanton. It was remembered, saying, what way he had taen the thing. Tam, says he, ye hae gotten the better of me in smear, and I hope, says he, ye'll find at least all that ye expect it at the bass. Which have since been thought remarkable expressions. At last the time came for Tam Dale to tack young Solans. This was a business he was weel used to. He had been a craigsman for a laddie and trusted nane but himsel. So there was he, hanging by a line and speldering on the craig face, for its heest and steekest. Four tenty lads were on the tap, hodding the line and minding for his signals. But where Tam hung there was naething but the craig, and the sea below, and the sullen skirling and fleeing. It was a braw spring morn, and Tam whistled as he clocked in the young geese. Mony's the time I've heard him tell of this experience, and I the swat ran upon the man. It chanced, you see, that Tam keeked up, and he was a warrior muckle solen, and the solen piking at the line. He thought this by ordinar, 
and outside the creator's habits. He minded that ropes was unca saft things, and the solon's neb and the bass rock unca hard, and that twa hundred feet were rather mair than he would care to fall. Shoo, says Tam. A wa, bird, shoo, a wa wi ye, says he. The solon keek it doon into Tam's face, and there was something unca in the crater's ee. Just the e keek it gid, and back to the rope, but knew it rocked and whistled like a thing demented. There never was the solon made that rocked as that solon rocked. It seemed to understand its employ brawly, burzing the saft rope between the neb of it and a crunkled jag of stain. There gave a cold stend of fear into Tam's heart. This thing is nae bird, thinks he. His een turned backward in his head, and the day gaed black about him. If I get a dwam here, he thought, it's by with Tam Dale, and he signalled for the lads to poo him up. And it seemed the Solon understood about signals, for nae sooner was the signal made than he let be the rope, spread his wings, squawked out lud, took a turn fleeing and dashed strocht at Tam Dale's een. Tam had a knife, he got the cold steel glitter, and it seemed the Solon understood about knives, for nae sooner did the steel glint in the sun, and he gied the ace squawk, but lacher like a body disappointed, and flagged off about the ruinous of the craig, and Tam saw him nae mair. And as soon as that thing was gain, Tam's head drapped upon his shoulder, and they pulled him up like a deed corp, dodden on the craig. A drama brandy, which he went never with it, brought him to his mind, or what was left of it. Up he sat. Run, Geordie, run to the boat, mak share of the boatman, run, they cries, or yon solon will hear a war, says he. The fowler lad stared at the other, and tried to fully for him to be quiet, but Nathan would satisfy Tam Dale till yin of them had started on a heed to stone sentry on the boat. The others asked it if he was for doon again. No, says he, and neither you nor me, says he, and as soon as I can win to stand him at twa feet, we'll be off for this craig of sotten. Sure enough, nae time was lost, and that was our muckle, for afore they won to North Berwick, Tam was in a crying fever. He lay all the summer, and wha was sae kind as come spearing for him, but Todd la preek. Folk thought afterwards that ilka time Todd came near the house the fever had worsened. I ken the for that, but what I ken the best, that was the end of it. It was about this time of the year. My grandfather was out at the white fishing, and like a bairn, I boot to gang wi' him. We had a grand take, I mind, and the way that the fish lay brought us near in by the bass, for we forgathered wi' another boat that belonged to a man Sandy Fletcher in Castleton. He's no lang deed neither, or you could spear it himself. Weel, Sandy hailed. What's yon on the bass? says he. On the bass? says Grandfather. Aye, says Sandy, on the green side of it. What in kind of a thing? says Grandfather. There canna be naething on the bass but just a sheep. It looks unca like a body, go Sandy, who was near it in. A body? says we. I mean, ain't else like it that, for there was nae boat that could have brought a man, and the key of the prison yet hung o'er my feather's head at him in the press bed. We keep at the twa boats close for company and crap in near her hand. Grandfather had a glass, for he had been a sailor, and the captain had a smack, and had lost her on the sands of tea. And when we took the glass to it, sure enough, there was a man. He was in a crunkle of green bray, a wee a blow the chapel, all by his lee lane, and looped and flang and danced like a daft quine at a wadden. It's Todd, says Grandfather, and passed the glass to Sandy. Aye, it's him, says Sandy. Or yin in the likeness o' him, says Grandfather. Sma as the differ, quo Sandy, deal or warlock, I'll try the gun at him, 
who he, and he brought up a fowling piece that he I carried, for Sandy was a notable famous shot in all that country. Hod your hand, Sandy, says Grandfather. We maun see clearer first, says he, or this may be a dear day's work to the baith of us. Hoot, says Sandy, this is the Lord's judgment, surely, and be damned to it, says he. Maybe I, and maybe no, says my grandfather, worthy man, but have you a mind of the procurator fiscal that I think you'll he forgive we before, says he. This was our true, and Sandy was a wee thing set a gee. Ah, weel, Edie, says he, and what would be your way at? Oh, just this, says Grandfather, let me, that has the fastest boat, gang back to North Berwick, and let you bide here and keep an eye on Thorn. If I can find Lapreek, I'll join ye, and the twas will hear a crack with him. But if Lapreek's at him, I'll run up the flag at the harbour, and you can try thon thing with a gun. Ah, weel, so it was agreed between them twa. I was just a bairn, and clum in Sandy's boat where I thought I would see the best of the employ. My grandsire gied Sandy a siller tester to put in his gun with the lead the traps, being mere deedly again bogles. And then the A boat set off for North Berwick, and the tither lay where it was, and watched the one chancy thing on the bray side. All the time we lay there, it looped and flang and capered and span like a teetotum, and whiles we could hear it skelloch as it span. I hae seen lasses, the daft quines, that would loup and dance a winter's nicht, and still be looping and dancing when the winter's day come in. But there would be folk there to hod them company, and the lads to egg them on, and this thing was its lee lane. And there would be a fiddler diddling his elbuck in the chimney side, and this thing had nae music but the skirling of the solens. And the lasses were bits of young things with the reed life dinlin and standing in their members. And this was a muckle, fat, creeshy man, and him fawn in the veil of years. Say what you like, I'm on say what I believe. It was joy was in the crater's heart, the joy of hell, I dare say, joy, whatever. Mony a time I ask it myself why witches and warlocks should sell their souls, wilka their maist dear possessions, and be all duddy, runkled wives or old feckless, doddered men. And then I mind upon Todd La Prick, dancing all the hours by his lane, in the black glory was hurt. Nay do they burn for it muckle in hell, but they hear a grand time hear it, whatever, and the Lord forgies. Weel, at the hinner end we saw the wee flag yerk up to the masthead upon the harbour rocks. That was all Sandy waited for. He up with a gun, took a deliberate aim and put the trigger. There come a bang, and then a wafu skirl frae the bass. And there were we, rubbing oor een and looking at other like daft folk. For with the bang and the skirl, the thing had clean disappeared. The sun glinted, the wind blew, and there was the bare yard, for the wonder had been louping and flinging, but a second sign. The hail way him I roared and grat with the terror of that dispensation. The grown folk were Nancy Muckle better. There was little said in Sandy's boat but just the name of God. And when we won in by the pier, the harbour rocks were fair black with the folk waiting us. It seems they had found La Prake and Yenny as dwams, cawing the shuttle and smiling. A lad they sent to hoist the flag, and the rest abode there in the Wabster house. You may be sure they liked it little, but it was a means of grace to severals that stood there praying into themselves, for nane cared to pray out loud, and looking on thon awesome thing as it caught the shuttle, sign upon a suddenty. And with the a dreadful skelloch, Todd sprang up for his hinderlands and fell for it on the wab, a bloody corp. When the corp was examined, the lead traps hadn't played buff upon the warlock's body. Sorrow a lead drap was to be found. But there was Grandfather's cellar tester in the puddock's hair to him.